Okay. So um, actually just uh, maybe um, for Jack and Wyatt's sake, I'll just kind of, um, do you know anything about the sustainability committee already or is this totally brand new to you? To us. Okay. Um, well, so I will say we as well are uh, kind of brand new, not so brand new anymore, but a fairly new committee. Um, we were started last um, June, I believe. Um, and um, I'll just be really, I'll try to be as brief as possible. But basically, um, this stemmed from there's a program called Sustainable CT, which is a Connecticut wide program that certifies towns in Connecticut based on um, different criteria. You have to um, basically complete this very extensive, I would say, application um, where you, um, based on different activities that the town is participating in that fall into different categories of, um, of sustainability type initiatives as measured by the sustainable CT program. Um, you can get a certain certification level. Um, right now it's just bronze and silver. They have two categories. Um, they're building for gold, but basically right now you can either be bronze certified or silver certified based on kind of like the aggregate of what the activities that you're doing. Um, and um, we had applied, I I think first in, oh gosh, I want to say 2019 um, and received bronze certification and we got recertified for bronze um, several times since then. Um, and so this committee kind of came out of that sustainable CT program because what we wanted to do was instead of just responding to this you know, large scale application every year. Um, with what we are currently doing on the sustainability side, we thought we would try to carve out more things that we as a town want to do rather than just, you know, kind of um, fulfilling the requirements of the sustainable CT program um, and kind of determine, you know, what do we want to do as a town um, from a sustainability standpoint. So it's kind of been born out of that program. Um, and certainly some of the initiatives have been driven or inspired by the program, but we're trying to kind of make our own way with it. So um, we're still pretty new. And as you can see, pretty small as well. Um, and one thing I will say about, um, and I can send you links to it um, afterwards if you want to check it out, because it is an interesting program. But what was uh, when I first started getting involved in the sustainable CT um, application, pro, uh, you know, application procedure, uh, I was surprised by how vast the criteria were. Like I thought it was just going to be, you know, you know, global warming or not, you know, like keeping the forests intact or you know things that were pretty like what you think of when you think of sustainability. But um, this, this is a good intro to Laura, for example. Um, one of the whole sections is about arts and culture, or there's a whole section on um, historical assets, so preserving what's kind of historical in your town. So it's, it's a lot more expansive than just what you might automatically think of when you think of sustainability. So um, do you have any questions? Um, I can put in the notes a uh, link to the, sorry, in the chat a uh, link to the sustainable CT program and, and it's probably worth your just checking out to see a little bit more about what it is um, just because this whole thing was kind of born out of that. Do you have any questions about it? The explanation though. Sorry? I said no, I do not have any questions. Thank you for the explanation oh. for the committee. Okay, and now oh my goodness, sorry. I'm, I'm visiting a friend in DC, so I'm not in my normal space. So I'm kind of like trying to make my computer work. Um, keeps doing weird things. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All I'm trying to do is find the chat. Um, Do we not have a chat feature here? I don't see it. I don't, I don't see, see a chat feature either. Um, I don't see it. Let's see if you click on participants. 
sometimes it's there. I don't see that either. I click participants and I don't get anything. Um, a lot of times the town meetings are defaulted to no chat. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for just, It's distracting. I was like, I think I'm going crazy. Like, where's the chat button? Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. So, um, I mean, Jack and Wyatt, it's, um, you can just Google sustainable CT in the website. The, the website is literally sustainable ct.org. I'll actually pull it up on my share screen so you can see the um, web address, but you can just pull it up there. Okay, so I will, without further ado, unless anybody has any questions, I will call to order um, this special meeting of May 19th, 2022 for the Sustainability Committee. Um, and Alexis Khan present. Yeah, Pat Turner. Craig, wake up. I said my name already. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't, couldn't hear you. <laughs> and I chimed in at the same time. Craig Fasula, present. <laughs> Hi, Laura Tillinghast, representing Milltown Arts. And I think Brett just joined, but I think he's muted. So um, I don't know. Hi. Yeah, I just, sorry, okay. just left another meeting and now I'm driving to pick my son up from lacrosse. I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Um, so um, the, the first agenda item is to review the um, draft minutes from the last meeting. I will pull those up as well. Um, but does anybody, I, I know Tula had distributed them. I think that I know that the date was wrong on the uh, last agenda. So I apologize for that, but, um, any other, I, I'll scroll through, but does anybody have any questions or edits to the minutes from the last meeting, which was April 5th? No. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Or do I have to do that? Yeah. Okay. Aye. 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 Any um, rejected? Okay. Approved. All right. So the next thing was um, the, just kind of a quick Earth Day debrief. Um, I know that I will give a special shout out to Craig because I know, gosh, based on your photo of all those trash bags, that was a lot of trash that you picked up. Um, so well done. That was a, quite a feat. Um, I just thought uh, if we have any, you know, um, I, I, I realized I had put the, uh, made the signs that had the QR codes for, um, you know, where you could scan it and find out more about the sustainability committee. Um, and I don't know if you've seen them, but there's one that was placed with, um, I had purchased recycled trash bags. Um, so I thought, you know, the idea of like generating less new plastic if we're picking up, you know, more junk. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I placed one at Hewitt and one at um, basically like, you know the Jeep trail that that kind of exits over out onto um, when when Chautauk Hill Road. Um, so like it's right across from the dump, basically. So I put another one there. Um, I I don't think that anybody used the <laughs> used the trash bags, unfortunately. So I don't know if those were really um, top places or if people just brought their own trash bags. Um, uh, I did clean up at Hewitt on Earth Day and then the next day did an, um, a cleanup a little bit in that area that was that is the, the Jeep um, trailhead. Um, I did leave the sign up. Um, I don't I actually thought I should probably go get it um, at Hewitt because I thought, well, maybe if people are walking and yeah. They just are like, oh, what's the sign? Or if they're at the pavilion, what's the sign? They might, you know, investigate and find out more about the sustainability committee since the QR code goes to our um, sustainable uh, sustainable North Stonington um, webpage. But I don't know if there's really getting, you know, whether it's functioning like that. I should probably, you know, take the sign down because it's Earth Day related. But anyway, um, 
I don't know if anybody has other thoughts or ideas for next year or, you know, ways that we could get more engagement or how your experience was with Earth Day that you want to share. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'll say that, I mean, I sent that out because it was like, wow, there's a lot of trash on the side of the road. Yeah. And instantly felt ridiculous because I wasn't looking for a pat on the back or like kudos or anything like that. Like, you know, <laughs> then I felt sort of silly and kind of blushed. Um, but I mean, I really, it was good to be out. Cars beeped a little bit, a couple people stopped. Um, some people knew it was Earth Day, some people didn't. Um, but, you know, I can say based on not just how much trash there was, but like the um, the degree of, of breakdown of the trash that I don't think that's been done in, and some of the old beer bottles that are just very, very old that they don't make anymore. Um, mm. You know, it just doesn't, that hasn't been cleaned up in, oof you know, probably over a decade, if not more. Right. And I got got probably a little over three quarters down one side of the road. So I didn't even do, you know, half from Billings Lake down to Route um, to Route 2. I'm, I was on 201 on Costa Duck Hill Road. So there's more. And I'll go back and do some more. Um, but I just, at one point, like my back was hurting. I was feeling really achy. And um, my uh, partner called. I was like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm stretching on the side of the road. My back hurts. She's like, just stop. I was like, no, the earth is like really hurting right now. I'm like, I'm hurting too. And that's okay. Cause my hurt is so much less. Oh. <laughs> uh, but I, it was a really, it was a good experience. I'm looking forward to doing it again. And I think, I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to like talk to people about it more. And probably I think if we get more outreach, if we're a bigger community next year, then we'll be able to connect with more people and maybe have it a little more organized, but you know, and then I drive, every time I drive back now, I'm like, Oh, look at that. I see that bottle. That wasn't there right. last week. Right. It's a, it's just going to keep on happening. I'd say, uh, I mean, this is probably everyone's experience, but you know, it's like at least 75% alcohol related between the nips and mm -hmm. just like beer bottles and seltzer bottles and like whatever is hip and in right now, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that many people are drinking in their cars and then like disposing of the evidence. Like it's, it's kind of profound. Yep. But, you know, that's, I think they should put uh, at least five cent deposits on NIPS because someone else will pick them up. I think that's at least a good idea. They should be illegalized, but, you know. Yeah, well, we've got, they passed the five cent, did they? But I agree, there's a push for illegal and, and that's where it needs to go because nobody's going to notice the five cents. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and also cigarette butts. I I was really yeah, sure, but it's a remarkable. Right. Mm -hmm. I got to the point where like I kind of left those. Like, there's a lot of other trash where I can like bend down so many times. Right. I also the interesting thing was like in the area, the Jeep Trail area, there was some like weird stuff that I. It almost seemed like either, as you said, it's blowing over or something, or like people just get that far and then realize like, oh, I'll just dump it over here instead of going to the dump or something. And it did seem old too, but like some of the stuff, it was like rusted metal scissors and like, and I'm like, this stuff looks first of all, really, really old, but also like, what well, you wouldn't, it was stuff that you wouldn't just toss out the window, you know, as you're driving down the street, like it was very specific. And I was like, why were people dumping all this here? um like parts of furniture and things it was just odd odd group of like hue it was normal you know hue it was like to your point beverage containers a lot of cigarette butts nips plastic bags you know stuff like that but like the 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 area outside of the dump was just weird things it was very strange um but anyway i don't know if people are like dumping things there you know what i mean like more purposefully rather than it being but it seemed old it wasn't yeah anyway is that sorry this is a non um someone such as myself who is not very familiar with this, the geography of the town so well but um is jeep trail like is that a full 
is it a, a cut through dirt road? What What is that officially? I mean, it's on the map and everything, but what is, does anybody know what the use of that road is? No. So Alexis, hi, it's Laura, sorry. Um, what, I've never heard of Jeep Trail in North Stonington. Is that like the official name of it? Where is it off of? It's on the map as um, Jeep Trail. And that was sort of what I was trying to do as a landmark. Um, the way I found it was because I was trying to come up with something that was off the road, um, but close enough to the dump because we were prioritizing, like knew that there's a lot of trash around the dump um, that you know, either blows over or, or people, you know, just like comes out of their car as they're driving kind of thing, you know, like if they're, they have a pickup truck or something like that. Um, and um, so this was like the closest place where I could carve out, you know, I thought if somebody wanted to park or um, safely, you know, position the trash bags and the sign so that they were off the road, but also like close enough to the dump. And it was marked uh, on Google maps, so that's why I was just curious what it was. I'm just wondering if it's the other end. So um, you could go up Lantern Hill from Winnichog Hill. No, you'd be on the other side. Winnichog Hill, you'd come out at the dump. Jeep Trail should bring you, I wonder if that's the other end of the blue trail that brings you down back towards the trailhead for, but is cut off because of the farm like parts of it overlaid the farm. And um, I was actually watching a YouTube video the other night that because of, there's a, um, there's an electric fence because of uh, uh, what, which farm is it? Firefly is up there. Oh, I see, I see. And then it was cut off. It used to go through to a certain section, maybe back out to route two. I see. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I was just curious if anybody knew what it was, but it was just like, I literally just picked it off of Google Maps and, right. and indeed like a, it, it's wide. I mean, it's, it's, you could drive a car back there. So it's not like a, you know, like a blue trail kind of hiking kind of thing, but anyway, <laughs> interesting. Huh. Um, so the next, um, unless anybody has any other comments on Earth Day, I'll move to the next agenda item. Um, which was, I, I circulated, um, we received from, uh, if you recall, we discussed this a while ago, um, the Sustainable States Network Community Energy Challenge Climate Action Technical Assistance. They, they, this was through Great Plains and it was again, a benefit of Sustainable CT that they um, leverage this uh, Great Plains Institute and their personnel who have certain expertise to be able to um, provide certain suggestions based on what the town has expressed as a priority in terms of how we want to um, take some steps from a climate action standpoint. Um, and so the memo, and let me see, I'm gonna to try to pull it up, but I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll start talking and then I'll try to pull it up. Um, I don't know if you haven't had a chance to look at it, but basically the, areas that they really focused on um, in terms of and made recommendations and ways in which we could try to um, maybe prioritize um, were basically like carbon sequestration and um, regenerative farming practices. I sort of bucketed those into the, I mean, they had them as number one and number three, I believe, but I sort of think of them like kind of this, I mean, the, 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 way of doing it is kind of the same. I don't really understand why they had it in two separate categories because I think it's like kind of a little bit of um, overlap and one of the same. And then the second one was, um, and I'm gonna pull up what it's actually called, but basically, uh, you know, where you're putting, you're kind of um, melding farming with solar farms. So putting in um, actual, uh, you know, farming where you're getting usage of the space besides just having it be like gravel or something like that. Um, and so I thought it was interesting recommendations the, the, for kind of two reasons. So the first um, was that, you know, I know we've talked before, I think I, in a previous meeting had talked about the fact that, um, you know, from a no-till farming perspective, I hadn't, you know, I, I, 
read a lot about it and thought, oh, this is great. This is so interesting. And then in um, that in having some conversations with some of the local farmers about it, one thing that had been expressed was that, okay, no-till farming is great, but then you can um, or, you know, you can plant a cover crop, which is great practice for, um, like, let's say the winter period, but then in order to get rid of the cover crop in order to plant what you're planting, like corn for the season, if you're not able to till, then the response that they've had has basically been, well, then you spread, spray a bunch of herbicide because how else are you going to get rid of this in order to make room for the corn? And that was my understanding in having these conversations. So it's sort of like, which is the lesser of two evil. Like, do you want to be, spe- you know, like spraying a bunch of chemicals in order to, you know what I mean? It's not like it's, it's a problem, but you're causing another problem. So um, I, uh, I contacted, so basically I was trying to figure out if there was a way to kind of can, you know, address that issue um, and what are farmers doing in, to, you know, kind of on the ground, like this is all very great recommendations, but like what are, in a, to address this particular challenge, what are they doing? Um, I uh, contacted, there was a resource um, in the memo that was um, contacted them like a week ago and they haven't gotten back to me. So I guess I should follow up, but it was in the, the resources of that memo. Um, there was a website that was um, Jonathan Ludgren, director of and I don't know how to pronounce this, but S SDSC's foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, there's a contact form and I contacted about that specific question. Like, okay, this is a challenge that, um, you know, some of our farmers in town have expressed, like, how do you get around this or what is your recommendation? And I haven't heard back. So as I said, I'll follow up because it's weird that they didn't get back to me. But, um, and then the other thing is, I know that um, the other, the other sort of, uh, thing that I was trying to do um, was I called and emailed Belinda Lerner because she had said she's been one of the people that I as you are aware um, couldn't join the committee officially because of uh, deliveries for the um, the the um, co-op the um, you know of her produce but she was willing to kind of be a sounding board for us. And I had spoken with her specifically about this. And um, she had said that back in, like before, when I last spoke with her, it was in anticipation of she was going to be participating in some sort of seminar in, I think it was Griswold or something. There was a farmer that was talking about no-till farming and some of these challenges. And so I followed up with her to say like, you know, how did it go? And like, what did they have anything that you came out of saying, okay, this is a way that we could do it a little differently to address this, this kind of challenge um, and kind of make regenerative farming potentially more eco-friendly, but also, you know, maybe a little bit of a practice that could get more people on board. Um, and I haven't heard back from her, so I'll keep trying, but she, um, she was the, I, I, I had remembered that she had gone recently to something that was um, on this particular topic. So I guess as of now, I don't have, um, you know, a ton of feedback, but I'll continue to work on it. Um, but I did think that that was interesting about this memo was that was one of the areas of focus, which in talking to Belinda had been one of the things that she had recommended. She was like, oh, I think we could have a real opportunity here to get more, both like non-professional farmers, you know, just like the people in town who are doing their own gardening. Like that mm-hmm. was, kind of, she was um, thinking there could be, you know, maybe we could do sort of a, a campaign um, to get more people who are just doing, you know, like I have a garden and I'm a bad gardener, but like, you know, I remember the first year, that I had the garden, I got a tiller and I tilled it all up. And then since yes, then, and we'll now not do that again. But, um, you know, so to those who are like hobby gardeners, such as myself, that was what she was thinking, oh, maybe we could kind of like do some campaign where, you know, whether it's through the library or something like that, just kind of spreading the word about, you know, just don't till. Um, but I was thinking, well, there's a lot of cropland in town that is used for corn. And so if we could, you know, kind of find a solution that is palatable to the farmers um, that we could kind of like till, kill two birds with one stone. So 
Um, haven't found a solution to that part yet. I did listen, interestingly enough to, um, well, this is kind of an aside thing, but, um, but the other thing about the memo that was, um, sorry, I have to pull it back up on my phone, uh, was I was thinking about it in the context and I wanted to open this up um, for discussion. The, you know, I know the new solar farm that was kind of contentious, but I think got a, you know, that the, the, the whole big project um, for that mm -hmm. larger solar farm. Um, you know, I don't know what, what, if anybody knows about this or if the, the, you know, those who are managing or running the project, um, you know, do, has any discussions been had about, oh, it's called agrivoltaics. So having the solar farm have anything else that's more farming related um, outside of just, you know, like gravel or mowing a lawn or something like that. Does anybody know anything about that project or? Yeah, they, they usually use sheep. Right. The yeah. company usually uses sheep. Sheep. And, and, and they claim that that's what they were thinking here. Oh, they've said that they're going to put sheep on yeah. it? Well, they said that's a plan. That doesn't say, yes, but that's a plan. It's not the same thing as saying, signing something, but yes. Right. I see. Okay, so it has been discussed already, and they have the intention of, um, the interesting thing in the memo, just Pat, to your point, um, one of the things was the town may want to consider adding elements that address agrivoltaics, this is in the zoning and regulation, but um, one thing was pollinator habitat. So, you know, maybe having plant, you know, making the actual solar farm have, um, be pollinator friendly. Do you know well, if that- You either have to find plants that you can grow that aren't going to grow more than that are going to stay really low which is more difficult or you're going to combine it with sheep because your mowing would not be an alternative it not be feasible so it's still even if you have you you could still you can combine that the plants that are there yeah they're not going to be growing to their full height and everything but the sheep the sheep are to prevent having to mow it and if you just grew just grew plants, it would get too tall, and that doesn't work. You have to have to have a combination. I wonder. This is anecdotal, but um, so we in a in an, a big area have this thing that I used my app to identify because I never knew what it was, but it was um, it's apparently called ground ivy, and it took over, and it's and it doesn't get tall like it, like. I wouldn't need to mow it. I mean, I, it's, it's not, it doesn't get, you know, tall like grass does. And it has these little purple flowers. And I don't know if it's, you know, if they're particular, I, I would imagine they are, I, I haven't necessarily been like, oh my gosh, there's so many butterflies and bees on it, but I think they, that they're attracted to it. But, you know, something like that, where it's kind of a ground cover that stays low and doesn't need to be mowed, but also has flowers. Oh, I think you're muted, Pat. Do you mean vinca? Because that's supposed to be invasive. It's not vinca. It's okay. Um, it's I different. So, sorry, it's different, but it is invasive, and it's oh, probably it's not something you want to be planting. Uh, we definitely didn't plant it. I was like, oh, this place is over. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Oh, you mean you mean like a, it's also called gill in the grass? That's another name for it. It has yes, sort of it is leaves. creeping yeah. Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for clarifying that. I, as I said, it's just like there. So, you know, I, I, I definitely didn't plant it intentionally, but um, uh, I, but I wonder if there's something you know, not necessarily that, but like some other. Are there any other things that aren't invasive but flower and are low, like kind of. Hmm. Don't need to be mowed. Um, no, it depends what you mean. Don't need to be mowed. If you want to be able to walk on it, or if you don't want it more than, if you want it less than six inches tall, then you've got. It, it, it all depends what your parameters are, what you're willing to do. But uh, oddly, uh, Pachysandra is a native. Oh, I mean, it's not something you can walk on, but it is a ground cover. Right, um, and. Um, the insects will go after it, and surprisingly, you know, some people, some it, it spreads really well when you don't want it to. But it is a native. 
Uh, and it has flowers, not for a very long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. Pollinator, yellow mm -hmm. pollinators like that. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, I mean, what? So back, to, back to the farms. Uh, you're talking yeah. about the no-till. Yeah. There's one particular farm in town that my husband and I drove by just this last week, and they've obviously, you know, their cover crop, rather than turning it in the soil, they've sprayed it, and it just looks so like, oh, no, this can't be a good thing. <laughs> it just You don't like seeing it. You know, I understand that some people think it's a good alternative, but uh, it's scary looking to see this yellow, big yellow field. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. I was like, oh, that doesn't seem like a very good alternative. Yeah. Like, that we don't want to release the carbon from the soil through the tilling, but like spraying a bunch of weed killer doesn't seem like a good alternative. Um, so that that inherently seems to be like, well, somebody's got to have a solution to this on a massive scale, but um, I haven't, I don't know if anybody else, um, that's why I was wanting to get the feedback from Belinda, but um, I haven't been able to get in touch with her yet. I know it's busy season for her, so I'll keep at it, but I- um... Alexis, hi, yeah. Laura again. So um, there is a new farm in town, Odessa Farm. She actually happens to be across the street from me, Emma. I can't think of her last name, um, but she is a no-till farmer and I believe she just did some recent talks at the library. Oh, wow. Do you want me to send you her contact information? Sutton, something like that? That would be amazing. Yeah, I will. Um, if there were a chat, I would put it in the chat, but I can certainly <laughs> email you her contact information. Well, okay. is it? Yes. Yeah. They have, when's their next? Yeah, I, I, I was at the last one she gave. The next one is some date I couldn't make, so I didn't pay attention, but there are like four programs she's doing at the library. Yes. Yeah. And I actually you emailed her because when weren't you? I was not. Was Tula? Oh, I thought you were. Okay. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. But it was all about no-till planting. Yes. Alexis, get her to join the committee. <laughs> Sorry? Get her to join the committee. Right. My committee? Yeah. Yes, you should get Emma to join your committee. They're new yeah. to town. Oh, oh, um, oh, I see. Sorry, I didn't hear I you. Would, I'd be happy to host a, um, we could have like a little campfire and something here, like a get to know North Stonington, and we could have like the total ulterior motive of getting her to join the sustainability <laughs> committee. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, um, she, just to clarify, she did a talk at the library about no-till farming recently. Yeah, yeah. Like I think she's a has she has a series of four. I think it's on the library calendar, okay. um, and I, I believe uh, well, because so the JC. So very interesting things happened in the past couple of days. JC Tatro, who is the owner of the um, Trillium Farm up the road on East Clark's Falls Road, reached out to find out whether. Um, the farmer's market could resell any of his uh, produce. So I was like, we can't actually, but my neighbor is starting a CSA. She's new to town. Maybe she was looking to supplement. So I thought I would connect those two that way. Um, but I can get you Emma's information. She, uh, yeah. Starting a CSA, has a farm across the street, relatively new to town, probably doesn't even know the sustainability committee even exists. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. No, thank you so much. That'd be great. Thank you, Laura. Um, so, yeah, I, so that one, I would imagine the library was geared towards hobby farmers more than the, you know, kind of larger farms in town. I see. That's great that they put that on already. I mean, um, did anybody, did, has anybody attended it or, Pat, did you say you attended it? 
I was not at the first one. I could well, I couldn't if, in the schedule conflict. I was at the last one and I won't be at the next one. It's kind of hit or miss. Do you but know it was good. There, were, there was a good turnout. I'd say more than 30 people. Wow, that's great. Cross, very big cross section. And um, do you know if they address the question, at least during the one that you attended, Pat, the question of what do you do when you want to get rid of the cover crop in the spring to plant? Ooh. Not, no, I mean, they're not killing it. They're just uh, planting between in rows. It, it, it's geared toward um, all, all of her work is in, you know, vegetables and flowers. She's like, it's just, just CSA gardener. Right, not corn or. But big, but big. Um, yeah, probably, I don't know if she has corn, probably. I mean, sweet corn. Um, she's big. Uh, she's. She, I don't know if she's always been, I don't know if she grew up in the area. I think she did, but she's always, she's come from local. I think she was in Noack before here. So she's, you know, she's a Southeastern Connecticut person. She's local. Her last one was yesterday, Wednesday, May 18th at 630. Okay, yeah. Organic Garden Pest I, Management. I knew it was one I could, yeah, I wanted to go to that one, but they're being recorded, I understand. So they're available. Um, okay. Yeah, I want to, I want to see last night's. So the April 27th one says maximizing gardening production, interplanting, cover cropping, and yeah. companion planting. Huh. If you go to if you go to the library website, it, the calendars are there, or you could sign up to get them in emails. Okay. Um and you said there, sorry, sorry, I, I think I missed just the last thing that you said. Did you um, say that uh, they're recorded? I understand that they are. So I, wa I want to see last night's one because I was interested in that, but I was not available. Okay. No, that's really helpful. Thank you. And, and yeah, I'd love to reach out to her just to see um, if there's a, because I think it's, you know, maybe there's a way to, you know, promote the videos, but also like if there's a way to get more of more information that would be applicable to the, you know, because when you think about a scale perspective, you know, standpoint, like who really has most of who's doing most of the deal, you know, like it's one thing if it's a quarter acre garden, but um, when you're talking about acres and acres and acres that has a more of an impact. Um, any other questions or thoughts about the memo in particular? I don't know. Yeah, obviously we can, you know, if, if you haven't had a chance to review it yet, we can talk about it the next um, meeting as well, but just wasn't sure if anybody else had any thoughts or feedback. I mean, I would really like, I feel like after I talked to Belinda, that seemed to be, um, you know, I, I think we've talked about before in terms of you're an agricultural community, what can we do, you know, to make the most impact from a sustainability standpoint, you know, farming. And when after I touched Belinda, the whole thing of, you know, really addressing the methane <laughs> issue is a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but this was an area where she was like, oh, I think there's great opportunity here, but it was just how do you solve that issue? Um, so I think I'd like to try to run with this a little bit more if you, if there's support from the committee, um, you know, kind of fine tune this a little bit a way in which we can maybe kind of make some inroads on the regenerative farming side. But um, certainly if somebody disagrees with me, you feel free and I can uh, pivot. Uh, interestingly, I had, um, there was the economist had a webinar that, um, I actually didn't think I was going to make it. And I ended up being able to listen to it. Um, I had enrolled for it and then thought, oh God, I have a conflict, but then I was able to catch it. It was called, um, dairy methane emissions, how to achieve reductions. And I would say that 
it was a one hour webinar with um, people in, so it was the Vice President of Sustainability Research at Dairy Management Inc., um, Scientific Program Director from, for Foundations for Food and Agriculture Research, um, the Head of Sustainable Sourcing at Nestle, and um, the Chair of the International Methane Observatory Scientific Oversight Committee of the UN chief scientist and he's also oh and he's also the chief scientist of the environmental defense fund so it had quite heavy hitters I would say it was a little bit um you know I, I would say like vague you know not super prescriptive um I can I, I'm gonna see if I have a playback and I can share it with you if you're interested uh in unless I listened to it I didn't watch them but you know it's just a webinar um they they more talked about the fact that there's a lot, I would say the two things were there's a lot of technology and a lot of research going into what can be um, done about this. And so it was more that they think that through, you know, scientific research, we're going to find ways to kind of address this. Um, a lot of it was addressing the fact that in the United States, we've actually kind of through kind of dietary management of the cows, um, address this, a lot of the challenges in some of the other areas of the world that haven't really, um, you know, their practices aren't as far along from the standpoint of, you know, it was a lot on feed and, and manure management, but a lot of the feed part of it. Um, and just like the, like the, the, the digestion of the cows and how that's, and, and also the breeding of the cows um, in terms of like, I think like genetic, um, you know, being able to like breed them so that they digested in a different way. Um, so some of it was really focused on like, well, we've made a lot of inroads in the United States. This is more kind of like now an international issue. Um, but they did talk a lot about what we've talked about before I think it mentioned before is that like the additive to the feed that's um, some sort of uh, seaweed has is really um, cuts down on the methane that the cows produce. Um, so that, you know, kind of fact that seaweed is very effective at that. Um, the other they talked about, you know, and this was, I think, what I had explored through um, that call that I had with energy oh gosh, now I'm forgetting the name of the company, but um, the fact that Nestle, for example, is, you know, they have certain targets um, from the standpoint of, you know, being a more carbon neutral company and therefore um, Nestle is supporting a lot of these types of, you know, programs for dairy farms in order to reduce their methane emissions. Um, so that gets back to, you know, there's a lot of funding in place whereby if one of the farms in North Stonington wanted to pursue something like this, like it wouldn't be very, very cost intensive because you have companies like a Nestle who's wanting to offset, you know, from the, from the dairy farms itself by putting money into it. The issue becomes, you know, none of our farms really are at the scale that I think this is really addressing. You know what I mean? This is like giant dairy farms that are, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of cows. And I think none of ours are that big. Um, so that's another kind of like limitation for pursuing anything like this. Um, but anyway, it was, just, it was an interesting webinar. I can share, um, share the, you know, playback with you if, if you're interested, but um, I didn't feel like I, learned anything that was like, oh my gosh, this is revolutionary and I can bring back this amazing idea to the committee because it was kind of a lot of stuff that I had already either known or they, they kind of talked in broad strokes about like, you know, different things that are currently in the works, but not yet, you know, really taking over. Um, I will say the interesting thing that I did not know is that um, while methane, you know, obviously like is more problematic um, inherently that it, um, whereas carbon goes into the atmosphere and just stays there, that uh, methane actually has a shorter sh um, like time that it's in the atmosphere. So there's a ability as you cut methane emissions, you can make a lot more progress um, sort of on the climate change front, like in a much more expedited way because it, you take it, you know, once you reduce it, it's not just staying there. It's like you're turning over where it's, it's 
you're kind of like making more progress against it because it only lasts, I think it was nine years or something. I can't remember the exact number, but it was a lot shorter of a period of time. So that was interesting. I did not know that before um, this webinar. That is really interesting. I, I, I didn't, you know, cause I was kind of uh, out and about. So I wasn't able to write down what it was, but I want to say it was like something like seven to nine years or something. I'll try to come up with the stick statistic and share it. Anything else on that? Okay. Um, the other, the next thing um, on the agenda is the farmer's market participation. So um, I don't know if everybody got a chance to go to the farmer's market this past uh, weekend, but it was, I was amazed. I thought it was so wonderful and uh, congratulations to everyone involved. I don't know if Brett is still on the call. Um, Laura, I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about it. I wanted to say congratulations too. I just thought it was such great turnout and such a great event for the town and just Kudos all around. Thank you, thank you. It was um, beyond expectations for all of us. I, I, I'm not sure. I think Brett, if I, I will text him to make sure he's still here. I think he was picking up Louie, um, but it was. I'm here. Oh, Brett's here. So it was beyond anything that we could have said. And I know Brett, you were planning on speaking on the farmers market, so feel free. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, either one of us, it's it's fine. Um, yeah, every. The turnout was unbelievable. Uh, I wish I had a clicker to count how many people were there. Um, we're, we're working on a few things that we need to tweak, such as different parking ideas and some other things. Um, but the, the response from guests were amazing. People kept coming up to all of us talking about how happy they were to be there. Um, some people requested hey, can we start doing this weekly, bi-weekly? Wow. Uh, Laura and I have talked about this, about potentially maybe going bi-weekly next year, if that's a possibility. But we also don't, we worry about, um, if you go weekly, we're not getting that same attendance. Um, it's not an exciting right. time. People just say, I'll make it next week. I think part of what made it so popular is um, Laura did a fantastic job on, uh, Facebook and promoting it um, and getting it out there and the newspaper articles and also that it's just not a, a weekly occurrence at this point. So people were excited. Most of our vendors ran out of the items they were selling. Yeah. Uh, we have some new vendors coming in for the next one. Um, the Lions Club is going to be doing um, potentially doing some food there we talked about food trucks and we don't want to go overboard with, with the amount of food. If you talk to some of the vendors, they talk about some of the other farmers markets that have more food trucks. And yes, sometimes it draws more people, but actually their sales are way down compared to that. I talked to actually Tim Meokitis about it. And he said it was one of his best farmers market that he's wow. had. And he compared it to one of the other ones that has all these food trucks. And he's like, look, people come, but they're not buying as much. They're utilizing that money for, they're buying food and, and walking around, but they're not actually spending dollars. Um, I know we talked a few meetings ago about you guys participating if you'd like to. Um, so we're, we're open to that. Laura can talk about that as well. And then if we can work with you guys on maybe getting some more of the matching grant funding. I know Laura mentioned that she has one of the applications through sustainable CT to um, work on some of that crowdfunding to 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 you no know, start paying for some of these the expenses that we're going to incur moving forward too. But uh, regarding uh, you know the trash, we we didn't have a lot of excess trash, which was nice. Every vendor pretty much cleaned up after themselves. So I know that you mentioned the recyclable program that. Um, there was an organization running that we could reach out to. I don't see a need for that right now because really I took away two garbage bags and they weren't even both full. Wow. <laughs> then that might change a little bit with a, a food vendor there. Right. Um, but 
it, it wasn't uh, an issue at all. We have a portalet there now that um, we actually got Hewitt and the selectmen, we got to decide to keep it there permanently through the summer. So originally we were supposed to drop it off, pick it back up. Um, but it was basically the same cost to do that as it would be the monthly charge. So we're gonna leave that there so the town can utilize it, people hiking can utilize it, walking their dogs. Um, I don't know, Laura, if you have anything else you wanna add, but we'd love to have you guys participate, maybe talk about or have some information on some of the stuff you're working on or how you know people at home can uh, work on some of your projects. Yeah, and I, I, um, you know, I was saying when I saw uh, Bread at the Farmer's Market, it's, I think we, and I don't want to speak for the whole committee, but like we had, I think it's a great idea to participate. I think the first one just kind of snuck up on me more than I think it, I had anticipated. So it was more just like lack of planning. Um, but how does the other, how, how does the committee feel about, you know, participating with, um, my husband actually said, because I, he came with me and he was like, you realize we have one of these, um, I guess he got it for some, I don't know, something that in our past, I don't remember ever having seen this, but apparently we have like one of those very similar tents. So I, I mean, I, I can use that if, if we want a tent um, for the committee uh, to have like a vendor participation. But what are your thoughts on that? I just, uh, before you go forward, I'm just going to go on mute. And Laura, if, if she can respond to anything, I'm going to be listening, but I'm going to go back inside and finish uh, dinner with my son. I have him by myself okay. tonight after all the girls are playing lacrosse, so just me and him. So I'm going to go back in, but I'm going to continue to listen. And then Laura can follow mm -hmm. up with anything as well. Sure, no thanks, Thank Brett. You. No problem. Um, the next one's June 12th, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So Laura, what would it in, well, first of all, um, yeah, I don't know if the committee wants to participate. I was thinking actually about this the other day because I was thinking, okay, how would we draw people in? And I don't know if like we could have, like, so I guess what are the rules from the standpoint of, could we offer something, you know, like, baked goods or something that would draw people in not for sale but just for um you know like giveaways or something so, that drop you are there, are there are there rules about that i'll be honest yeah we would we are really trying to make this market the best for all of our vendors as possible and i think that's really successful and um unfortunately it involves we are not allowing giveaways okay or, or really bake sales. So the lions were gonna come, their original idea was they wanted to come and have a bake sale, but I, we feel that that kind of undercuts anything that any of our vendors who are paying to sell things sure. could do. Sure. However, come hang out with me in the market tent. People yeah. want to know more information. Pat and I chatted for a, a good a five or six minutes. I was chatting with people all day. People wanna know what's going on if we had another informational tent it would be fantastic. I've never spoken to so many people about things happening in North Stonington in my life. And I don't normally go to the North Stonington Agricultural Fair, but I was like, oh, maybe the market should actually have an informational booth at the Agricultural Fair because people just want to know more about what's happening in town. So I think people will come to you no matter what. We can work on signage. We can definitely work on um, the market would be willing to like spread the word, spread the message that you guys are going to be there and what you guys, you what the um what the function and the 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 real goal of the sustainability committee is yeah yeah i absolutely agree i i miss i misunderstood i thought you were going to be there i i knew i couldn't participate i wasn't available to participate but i i came with my um brochures to put them in the booth and there was no booth <laughs> sorry that was uh, yeah. i i don't think it would work if we, we discussed this at the, before i don't think it would work at the fair uh, for a number of reasons, but definitely we should be at the farmer's market. And with the, um, so the Milltown Arts is doing something at the Seven Rivers Festival. Yeah. Is the Sustainability Committee doing something or is that the Conservation so. Committee? The Conservation Committee is going to have something on the Sunday at the kayak launch. Abalone yeah. is having a big thing on the place at Putker Road. Um, 
I'm not going to be here, but uh, things are happening, and it, I hope it's really successful. I think that should be a good weekend. But, it should be a really good weekend, but yeah. I was thinking maybe we could promote those things in the June one, yeah. because that's coming up shortly after that mm -hmm. June market. It would be an interesting thing to have. Yeah. What is but, that date? Um, the Seven Rivers Festivals, uh, hold on, I, is it the 17th? It's a Sunday. No, it's, it's the weekend of the 26th, whatever day, that, I think that's oh. Saturday. It's uh, Saturday and Sunday, 26th, 27th. Yes, it's celebrate. my wedding anniversary, the, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So Milltown Arts is doing an end plan air event at Hewitt Farm. Mm -hmm. um, and then I believe the conservation committee is doing a kayak event, right. a family oh. kayaking event at Hewitt Farm. Um, and then there's a couple other things happening in town. I was hoping to get the brewery to do some special music on that, yeah. that weekend too, because they're right on the Chinook. On the, yeah, exactly. I've got the same thing. I've been trying to tell them they needed to do something because they're on the river. Yeah. Yeah. So for the for the farmers market, um, what are the and I could always circle back with you on this, but broad strokes, what are the um like what would it entail to have a tent um for a a um a civic organization for a town sponsored civic organization? It's literally a form. We're not charging anything unless you're selling something. Oh, okay. Um, so you can have an informational table, you can talk, yep. you can do whatever you need to do. Um, you could offer the market was selling water, but I'll be honest, like it wasn't a huge seller. It wasn't like a super hot day, but I, we were just, we had water to offer. We had water to offer people who needed water. Like most of our vendors, I gave them water because they hadn't really planned on it being that warm. Mm -hmm. um, it would be great. Like if we had you, out maybe helping park maybe like just kind of crowd control or answering questions sort of a thing like it uh the one thing that really super surprised us was the amount of people and we're hoping we also get that amount of people in june um we are still quite a spectacle which is good i think brett has a good point that we're not monthly um, we, I mean, we're not weekly, we are monthly. So we get a lot of, I spoke to so many families who were checking out of Foxwoods, heading back to 95 from other parts of Connecticut and just passed it and so, thought, let's go check out a Connecticut farmer's market before we head home kind of a thing. It was really fun. Um, but yeah, like, so if you had, I would recommend a tent because it's hot and it's sunny. So maybe one of those like yard canopies like a 12 by 12 sort of a thing um a small table of some kind just to put your stuff down i brought my two um i like to call them my winery chairs i had my little winery chairs and my little winery table <laughs> and, um it was just sitting and talking and standing and talking and and more talking and walking around and talking and it was a, my voice was a little bit hoarse on monday from, from <laughs> how many people we had conversations with on sunday but it was it was a nice day it was fun so yeah, there's no no cost, no anything for you guys. I and mean, we would love to have help if people were willing, but I know you guys are a small committee as well. So okay, and in the form, um, is that on the town's website or is it something I get? It's actually I linked it to the Milltown Arts website. So okay. at milltownarts.com, there's okay. a um an NSAF uh, market page. Okay. On that one. So it's that form. There is a, I think there's a community participation form and it's literally like, what are you, who are you and what would you like to do sort of a thing. So yes, if you guys want to join us for the June market, we would love to have you. Okay. Is that something that the committee would be interested in? Oops, sorry. I think that's great. I'm going to be out of town. My sister is turning 40, but oh. if I, wasn't I would be there. It sounds wonderful. I, I will I will be. I have a tent if you need available. a tent. I don't know about July, but I will be in June. I I already have an event on June twelfth. Um I support being there, but I think we have to have some sort of objective or um mm -hmm. material or game plan to to being there. Um the pollinator pathway could be a really good thing bringing you know that, it, introducing it to the, into the town. Yeah. yeah. And I, I had the brochures there, but there was no table. 
I don't know why I didn't take the brochures. I could have been handing them. Out. I couldn't stay, but I, I couldn't stay. But I didn't think of that. I could have given you brochures. Duh. I didn't think about it till after you left. But yeah. sorry, yes, yeah. it's quite okay. It's quite I knew okay. I wasn't. I wasn't available, but uh, yeah. But we don't think so, that's why we're having the meeting to figure all this stuff out. Right. You guys think about it. We're still happening on June in, in yeah. June, whether you, you can make it or not, that would, <laughs> it would be great if you could be there. If you can't, that's totally okay. We understand. Um, Laura. Just I having a sign up sheet for anyone that might be interested in helping out in town and joining the committee. I think would go yeah. far with all those people. You're bound to find somebody who's interested. Right. Exactly. That's a really good point. That's good. Um, Laura, do you want to talk about? I, I know you kind of touched upon this, but um, Milltown Arts. Um, what's you know what's happening with that? If you want to share that with the team. Um, yeah. Thanks so much. Um, Milltown has been really kind of catching some speed. Um, so it's been in my mind for probably three or four years. Um, it's in the past 18 months, I held a meeting with some local artists. I reached out to Sue Starr. I reached out to Bethany Brown. Um, they put me in touch with more local artists. We were able to, in um, December, host the winter show at the, the Arts Corridor at the Wheeler Library. Um, we had 21 all North Stonington resident fine artists participate between sculpture, photography, um, all, all mediums of painting and drawing. Uh, it was, I like to think it was super successful. It was really fun to put on. It was a great first effort for us. We also, Sue came up with a fantastic idea of the palette tree, which I think is, we are absolutely going to redo this fall. I think it was, I mean, this winter, it was fantastic. It was well-received. We sold over 50 palettes. We made um, a couple hundred dollars for the library. Um, and that was literally less than six months out of the gate for us, which was super exciting. Um, we are planning a uh, agriculture is the name of the show. Um, it's based on the North Stonington Agricultural Fair. It'll be a fine art show again in the arts corridor at the Wheeler Library. Um, all based on the North Stonington Agricultural Fair. We're having an opening on, I think it's the same Sunday as the July market, which is the 11th, but it could have moved. I think Sue is in charge of that one. So I just need to double check the date. Um, I have a fantastic idea and I am reaching out to the historical society that we're going to, I don't know if you listen to NPR or follow StoryCorps in any way, shape or form, but I was thinking as a collaborative historical piece, um, we would host, Milltown Arts would host a series of like kind of coffee chats or talks or like storytelling series we would record the stories all based on North Stonington history. Um, we would have them through StoryCorps archived into the um, Library of Congress, which would be amazing because they would be there forever. Um, and then we would, as a show, have a beautiful portrait photograph of the person who was speaking, a little bit of a bio and, and an interactive I don't know how it would work, but in my mind, it would just be a speaker kind of on repeat playing an excerpt of their story. So you would go and you would be listening to their voice and reading about them and looking at them. And I think it would just be a great um, collaborative piece for North Stonington and, Nor and one of Milltown's first kind of big collaborative pieces, getting a lot of people together and a lot of moving parts. And the, the story core aspect of just kind of documenting it and preserving it forever, I think the Historical Society will really enjoy. Um, so that being said, we are becoming an LLC. Uh, we are working towards getting our 501c3. We are, have an milltownarts.com. It is a very basic site, but it is up and it is running and I am able to edit it on my own. I don't have to rely on anybody for that. Um, we are working fervishly with the North Stonington, <laughs> North Stonington Farm um, Art, um, Artisan Farm Market and getting more uh, vendors and more space 
and uh, more people to come into town. Um, I did throw caution to the wind and threw in a ridiculous bid for the Gall John D. Gallup house <laughs> that I would pay no money and only in kind with functions and art talks and small concerts. Um, oddly enough, it was very well received. I think they were very nervous until they saw how well the farmer's market went. And I think maybe they're all on my side. For Milltown Arts, they want to make some money for the town. And I appreciate that. I would like to make some magic for the town versus money. But um, we are going to be applying for um, one of the sustainable CT grants. Um, I, I spoke with Alexis in the conversation last week or the week before kind of a thing. Um, and I'm just kind of getting my ducks in a row. And I think we're going to go in for, I don't have a name for the StoryCorps North Stonington project, but I think um, that's what we're going to go in for to try to get funding for. Oh, that's interesting. All right. That's great. Yeah. So that's what, that's what North Stone, that's what Milltown Arts is up to these days. We got a lot of, we got a lot of wheels going. And is everybody on the committee, do you, um, are you on the on the email re recipient list for? Um, and I don't know if I don't want to, you know, in, that everybody wants to be on it. But um, I receive there's emails um, that I receive about what's going on and what you know, like in terms of the you had referenced the um, en plein air thing. Oh like, yeah, we're oh that's right, we're painting. Oh my god, how did I forget? We're painting at Jonathan Edwards this Sunday. We have three en plein air events. I was actually in. Um, that was the reason, one of the reasons why I reached out to J.C. Tatro in addition to the, um, the farmer's market and he was looking for someone to get, to resell some produce. And I was like, well, Mill Time with Milltown Arts, we're doing these things. And he was like, oh, are you looking for any more places, places to paint? And I was like, I am. And your farm would be fantastic. <laughs> so we're looking at that as a fourth location. So, and then we, um, Kim, I don't know how to pronounce her name. It's like Grahava, G-R-A, there's a J and a V and something in there. Um, she just recently had a show with um, she and her daughter at the Wheeler, um, the Arts Corridor. And we have a date for their, their farm in October because she said the view and the color, she thinks it's gonna be fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we got lots of good things. But so some of the things with the, I think Milltown Arts is gonna be able to check some of your, I don't know if action items is the right thing with sustainable CT, um, but I think a lot of these things I didn't realize were there. And had I had checked out the sustainable CT site and all of the plans before I made my ridiculous bid for the Gallup house. I think I could have even come up with a better plan for the town on how them funding the Gallup house to Milltown Arts could actually check a lot of, a lot, a lot of these boxes for them. So we'll see what happens. I'm still working on it. <laughs> That's Laura, awesome. Do you want to join our committee, Laura? <laughs> I would love to join your committee, but I have, I'm, I'm on a couple of committees. So I, at this point, I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to not attend all of your meetings and maybe just check in every once in a while. But thank I you, Tula. To ask. <laughs> Thanks, Tula. You're giving the hard stuff. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, I will definitely keep all of these points in mind. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's the thing. When you look at all the requirements for the sustainable, if you look at any one thing that you're working on, Sometimes there are a lot of parts and you got to get all the parts or it doesn't count. So uh, if you don't have access to it, Alexis can. I sent Laura the grid of those that were the arts and culture um, specific because uh, there's whole kind of, yeah, I, I sent the, the grid of those yeah. Um, things to, so yeah, to, Pat, to your point, that's a great point. And then, so my question is, what do the points get the town? What's the benefit to the town of North Stonington to become sustainable for CT? Right, <laughs> well, that's a really good question. So I would say um, my understanding is it's several different things. Some are more tangible than others. So on the tangible side, it's the access I think the selling point is the access to that grant program and the fact that it's so flexible and it's open to so many different 
um, group. So it's not specific to just the town, but it could be any loosely formed group, like, you know, anything from pollinator pathways to Motown arts, like it doesn't have to be an official 501c3. Like, so the grant program is, I think what they tout as one of their biggest selling points. Yeah. I would say, um, you know, they're still a very fairly new organization as well. So like, I think that they are building out what they're what, you know, what the benefits are as well, as they kind of go along, because they haven't been um, established for very long. But oh um, the second thing is they think that from more of a reputational slash like drawing maybe new residents um, so that like, let's say young people are moving from um, a city like New York City or something and they're looking at, okay, which, where, where do I want to live? Um, they think that by, by being able to say, this is a sustainable town is going to have a draw for somebody that is um, conscientious about that type of topic and okay. wants to like minded, you know, community that wants that cares about uh, sustainability. Um, you know, again, that's the like less tangible, like how much does it actually, you know, <laughs> really matter for <laughs> bringing people into the town? I don't know. Um, but they think that it's that the selling point. And it's also, um, I would say, um, again, programs that are offshoots of the the, the, the the big one, the whole sustainable CT certification process, which is, you know, their big bread and butter. It's these offshoots like this um, technical assistance from the Great Plains Institute. So it's sort of like, oh, you get for free as part of, or, you know, whatever, for as part of this program, the access to resources that are very well versed in this topic and will be able to you know give us this advice and recommendations and resources to be able to further our own um, initiatives in this space so I think the short answer is grant money <laughs> for a very fairly easy process yeah um, you know they also have the other and I'm, I'm, I might be missing things but I think that's what they've been sort of touting. Okay. I'm I'm so sorry to interrupt, but uh, me and Jack have to get to a meeting at eight fifteen, and that was two minutes ago. So okay. very... <laughs> thank you for joining. Thanks yeah, for, no problem. For telling us that you're leaving, um, so that was very con kind of you. Thank you again. Good luck, yeah, guys. No so the one specific one that stuck out with me on the um the arts and culture one was number eight with establishing an arts and cultural district have you guys worked on any of that so far or no are these kind of open yes i believe that one in particular i think is open i'd have to go back and i can go back and double check what we've gotten for in terms of credit but i think to be quite honest we haven't gotten very much in that you know what i mean like we okay. haven't haven't gotten a ton in that category yet. All right. That's listen, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I will add this list to what we're doing. Like I, it's easy to check boxes when you've got things like, and if there's something I can add to check more boxes, I will, but I just, I, I'm in love with the idea of establishing an, uh, a district, an arts and cultural district in North Starrington, because I think it could start at Jonathan Edwards. And I mean, personally, I would love it to end at the John D. Gallup House when Milltown Arts is the residence there. <laughs> but it, it really like, there's a great little district. It might not be as walkable as some arts districts, but like it's it, in the long term, like it's walkable. Like you could do a whole loop from Jonathan Edwards onto Hewitt property down through North Stonington and back up to Jonathan Edwards. Like, down through the village kind of a thing. Like, I think it's possible, but I, I will just start kind of eyeing these and seeing whether we can add some things from the arts and culture district onto the sustainable committee. That's great. No, thank you okay. so much. Thank you. So Tula, I might be part of the committee now. I don't know. <laughs> Well, we, so typically I haven't heard from them yet. Um, I think it's usually around the June timeframe that we hear from sustainable CT about the certification process because it's annual and it's over the course of the summer and yeah. are um, about a hundred points away from silver, like based on where we currently, you know, where we land landed last year. Yep. So um, I think we were going to assess like, okay, what, we don't we, we we don't need to recertify. We have bronze for three years now, so it's a matter of whether we want to try to get silver or whether we're um, 
you know, just going to stick with bronze and work up enough for, you know, like it doesn't make sense to go through this again. Correct. Unless we know we're in a good You're place. There. Yeah. You know, we get recertified. And so maybe it's just a matter of we do, you know, another year of stuff like what you're doing with Milltown and other things that we're doing that then is going to, you know, make up like it's better to spend our time, I think, um, unless we know we're nearly there for the additional 100 points to do the stuff that will actually, you know, like make right. a difference rather than putting stuff together that is not going to, you know, that, that's just how I feel. But, um, so we'd have to assess where we stand sort of on, on things right now, based on what we've done over the past year. But, you know, with what you're doing with Milltown, we might even be, you know, I, I just have to take a look at the questions and the, and the points and, and they are coming out with a new, they always tweak it. So like what you had last year might not apply okay. um, for the second year. So anyway, not a problem, but I think a lot of these for well and I understand it's probably only 25 points and I will take a look at more things to find out whether we can do but and and right like I'm rushing into a lot of different things but right so more time definitely better (laughs) but okay all right sounds good though you're doing a lot of exciting stuff I'm very um impressed thank you do you guys have any questions for Milltown Arts for you guys all right. Alexis, can you uh, send me the email? I want to be on the, I want to be on the email list. Sounds like great stuff. Um, visit, if you visit milltownarts.com, um, there is a way, there is a link there through a Google form just to sign up for whether you're an artist or whether, so you're getting the correct emails kind of a Perfect. thing, whether you're an art enthusiast. Uh, yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for having me. Oh, I like your cat. <laughs> yeah, I like, very, your, I like your friend, yeah. Craig. <laughs> He's very happy to have some company. Well, thank you for joining, Laura. I really appreciate it and for sharing what you're doing and also being um, our resource for some information about the farmer's market participation too. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good night. I'm going to I'm going to drop out at this point, but um, let me know if you have any questions. um, And yeah, we hope to look forward to seeing you at one of the markets or around town or at the next uh, sustainability committee meeting. Thanks, Laura. Bye, guys. Have a good night. You too. Um, I think the only other um, Oh, uh, sorry, I, I misnamed this or miss, uh, I didn't mean no so fast. I meant the ag fair. I'm sorry, that that was my typo. Um, just for this as a quick update, um, I uh, took the list of what the ag fair itself purchases. Cause if you recall, we said, okay, we're not gonna do the vendor stuff because it way it's, first of all, it's way too wide a scope of everything that the vendors would provide. Um, so the um, I I took the list that Jody Whipple had provided me of she had to source you know from some, several sources what they what they buy for the ham and bean dinner and also for just like the fair in terms of um, trash bags and paper towels and toilet paper and that kind of thing and the interesting thing was um, so I found a company that kind of does like bulk um, it's called green paper products. I mean, it's pretty self like easy, easy name to figure out what they do um, and priced out per item, what it would cost for us to buy all of this in like a sustainable way. Um, Cause it's all like, it's all eco-friendly products, like either, um, you know, like cutlery made from, you know, recycled plastic or bamboo or, you know, that kind of thing, or like everything is really, really green. Um, The interesting thing about what they've had, particularly for the ham and bean dinner, um, what they've purchased in the past, because they sent me like a description of that, is it was a lot of styrofoam. And that to me was like, oh gosh, this is really making me feel even motiv- more motivated. Just, you know, like it wasn't like, oh, it was all, you know, a bunch of paper cups. Like it was a lot of, a lot of the items were um, styrofoam or plastic. Um, so I, I, I do, you know, think that it would be great to um, be able to replace 
that just again from just an awareness and and you know be able to gain visibility for the committee um but that from the pricing standpoint you know this stuff is is more expensive even though this was a bulk um you know site um i did submit sort of an overview of this to this um the point person from the sustainable ct i i don't have like a i had run it by him in theory and he had said that um it was something that they could do like a mat, you know, something that would qualify for a match grant. Um, but I, you know, I, I didn't have at the time, like all the details and everything. So I hopefully should know soon whether or not it would definitively be approved. Um, and I'll certainly share that with you. But just for reference, um, so from what I could gather, um, this was, I, I it was a little bit apples to oranges. So I don't, know if this is exactly correct and I do need to confirm this but that his like the budget for the ag fair that they spend is about three hundred dollars and I, I think that's not comprehensive because I think that she sent me two different lists and I was trying to cross-reference them so I, I'm a, a little confused so I'll get harder numbers from next time but basically like let's let's call it like it's about double so it was like three or four hundred dollars um, and anybody who knows more about this can chime in if you if you're involved in the ag fair planning but um, for what they purchased for the ham and bean dinner and for just kind of the overall fair and for um, the what I put together through the screen paper products and for each item and and pricing it out for comparable you know like this is a six ounce cup with top and you know like okay this is also a six ounce cup with top um, was that it was about eight hundred dollars. Um, so I don't know if like, again, if we had talked last time about, you know, maybe we, we subsidize it in some way so that, you know, let's say like, if we get approval to run it through a sustainable CT grant, if we run a crowdfunding campaign where it's like maybe to raise, you know, $300 and then we get, we match it for $300 and then we're basically like, subsidizing the purchase of all this stuff for $600, you know what I mean? So it's like they're having to contribute a little bit based on what they are, you know, budgeting for because they usually purchase it themselves, but we're kind of paying for the additional cost incurred by buying sustainable products instead of, you know, styrofoam. So um, any thoughts or questions or well, for the grant, if, if you're thinking that they would contribute, uh, the Grange would contribute, the fair committee, what they usually contribute, and then we put that toward the matching fund. Oh, match. If you, if the matching fund, the amount you raise, it can't be more than a third of that right. from the organization. It has to be individuals. Right. So you have to get, that would be only part of, you need the other two thirds, you'd need to raise the other two thirds to get the matching grant. Right. <laughs> Which I was, you know, thinking maybe, you know, uh, with, I'm hoping, you know, through some promotion, um, mm -hmm. Facebook page and, you know, in, in individuals, like between just mm -hmm. kind of our own individual word of mouth, you know what I mean? Like, if, oh, hit my neighbors up for, you know, 10 or $20 or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, do we like that idea? Should I continue to pursue it or? So there's no way to have them use the full amount they've already budgeted as half because you're saying that can only be a third of the of the half that gets matched with another half. That's confusing just to say in that order, but. Uh, Pat, I think you were on mute. All I said was correct. Oh. <laughs> I can do this just as well. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a little bit troublesome because they have the money that they're using and there's no way for, to get them to use all their money. Um, well, I was just thinking that they could like I was thinking about it originally in terms of, okay, so let's say they contribute to the grant, the, sorry, to the matching of like, I don't know, let's just call it like $300 or whatever. And that's a third of it. So if we're trying to raise $900, I, I'm just throwing that out there. Then if let's say their budget is 400, that we would just, 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, I feel like they could just kick in a hundred dollars. Like, let's say it doesn't cover the cost of everything we need to buy. Can't they just give us that outside of the, what we get? So let, let's say like it costs us a thousand. I mean, it, it, the way I budgeted it was 800, but maybe that's low. Like maybe I missed some things or whatever. So let's say it's 800. If, if we're short, like, let's say we raise 700 through the match, the crowdfunding in the match, couldn't they just give us the additional hundred dollars from the budget to buy the eight hundred dollars worth of goods, maybe. Like if our if our goal amount isn't necessarily the total amount, it's just maybe like the, the balance or something. So they right. use use but, their money. I mean, yeah, it's a little, can, little yes, complicated. you can do that. Yes, you can set you can set it up so it's all or nothing, or you can set it up for partial. Which so if we set it up for partial, yeah, and they contribute it. But they could st still only contribute a third of not just the goal, but a third of whatever we raise. To say if to say if we're looking for five hundred, well six hundred, that's easy. Say we're looking for six hundred, and we only raise five hundred, uh, four hundred, they could still only contribute the two hundred, two thirds of what the. Is they can contribute two thirds of what we raise, not two thirds of what we are trying to raise. So if we only do a part, they can only contribute a part too. And you could still, Craig, it's still what you said, if we get close, that would still work, but you'd have to get enough to make it work. It's complicated math. <laughs> right, right. Complicated. My, my concern is what's the timeline? Exactly. Because That's the next exactly. question. Yeah. I don't think it's this year <laughs> for a crowdfunding grant. Right. <laughs> Pat, from your perspective, does the, um, how long did you set, I know you extended your pollinator pathways campaign, but how long did, how many weeks did you originally set it for? No, I didn't extend it. We it set it up. Um, it was what well, was till the end of April and it didn't get started at the beginning of March. I wanted to do it for two months, but actually we raised all our money before that we finished early. Um, oh. but, uh, we were, I don't know. It was, it, including the additional amount we raised, I would say it was six weeks, so seven, maybe seven weeks altogether. But setting it up takes time. For instance, um, what what account would you use? What money account? I think um, it would be Ag Fairs account. Well, I guess that you could the, you could do it through the grant the fair committee. Yeah, use their account. Yeah. Right. So you have the you have the account, um, so you have to put it together, make it look pretty, and then get the word out on all of the uh, Facebooks and everything. Right. So if if you if you can do all the graphic stuff, it, it's sort of a template. I mean, a lot of it is it's it's mostly original work, but it fits into a template. When's the fair? The, it's late because it's always the second Thursday. It starts the 14th of July. I mean, I was I was thinking maybe we could do the the crowdfunding in like three weeks or so, like have actually the the time period be around three weeks. Um because then, you know, like I I feel like it's just not that, that huge a dollar amount, but maybe I'm being <laughs> naive. Like, you know, the, obviously if you're raising money for like something that's thousands of dollars, that, that takes a lot more time, but like, because it's only a couple hundred, I just felt like maybe we could get it, you know, get it done in a couple of weeks. Well, if, if you really think it's feasible, I don't know, the time seems short. If you really think it's feasible, um, I'd go ahead and start it right now. If you don't want to go through with it, you can always stop. But if you really think it's feasible, it, you got to start now okay. in getting it set up. Right. Okay. Well, I'll let you know what their decision is in terms of, you know, as I said, when I spoke with him, he said it was viable, but they have to get it like approved. So as soon as I get the approval or not, that will be, um, I'll keep you posted and maybe I could slap something together kind of quickly. 
10 days ago, Joseph Dickerson, I forget the guy that used to be doing it, but he, he uh, Joseph has been there since uh, last fall. He's a different person than the guy who's at Sustainable Connecticut. He set up a we webinar with a couple of people, including me, who had done it for prospective uh, grant ap applicants. So there were about, I guess there were about 10 people there. And oh. uh, and that is, that's recorded, that's accessible somewhere. I guess it's sustainable CT, I don't know, but it's, it's accessible somewhere. How did that go? Okay, no, it, it was just about an hour, I think. That's great. Did people have a lot of questions? Um, yeah, there was, um, I think there was one other person or two other people that had done grants, one or two other people, and then people who were considering, they were all people who had, had, were considering applications or had applications in. I see. Okay, um, Pat, on that topic, do you have any updates on the pollinator pathways side that you wanna share? Uh, yeah, I'm busy, <laughs> um, but we have to, we have uh, brochures. I did not put them in the town hall yet. The library in the town hall. I, I only printed 50 because at Staples, there's no um, no incentive, no no uh, discount for larger numbers. So the 50 was what I got. Um, we have plants. We did some planting yesterday to augment the little triangle, the clock at the parking lot with more pollinator friendlier plants that was yes and also some plants in the back of the green they were planted yesterday um, I started the planting at the little plot in the front of the congregational church and there are people meeting there tomorrow to finish the initial planting of that and we need people for Saturday for run for start at the library unfortunately Plans got changed as far as exactly where it is, but we got to start, which means um, digging uh, either turn. Ideally, uh, if we have enough pe if people, is scraping up the turf, turn it over, cover it <laughs> with cardboard, and then um, compost and earth on top of it. But um, we'll see what we get done. So Saturday is a work day at the library. And, uh, so I've been busy. That's great. I'm I'm down in DC through the weekend, but otherwise I would mm -hmm. enjoy. <laughs> and Pat's gonna be hot this weekend. I know Saturday's gonna be really hot. Well, we're meeting in the morning, so uh, <laughs> I don't know what the what the uh, graph is for the temperature on Saturday. But I've I've got a different work party on Sunday, so it couldn't be Sunday. Uh, there's that's an entirely different work party. So, so there's every day is busy. <laughs> well, that's great. Thanks for the update, Pat. And for the great work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last, the Sustainable Nursing website and Facebook updates, I don't, um, you know, that's just like an ongoing, you know, if you have anything um, that, you want to share uh you know feel free to send it to me um i can give it to jim to update to the website but otherwise i know you all have access to the facebook page um any other things that anybody else wants to discuss mm -hmm. would i make a motion to adjourn so moved sure. second in. Oh, and I guess, um, sorry, I should ask for our next, um, the next scheduled meeting, are we, is it, because I know we had to move this meeting because there were some conflicts, but let's just, if you don't mind, um, the next one is scheduled for the 7th of June. Does that work for everybody. I'm actually going to be out of town also for a wedding, but I can probably join by Zoom if everybody, if it works for everybody else. 
Although, wait, let me check. I might be in the air. My schedule straight. Um, will I be in the air? Well, anyway, I'll, I'll uh, I can't seem to find it. Um, but that, that date works for everybody else. Yeah, it works for me. Okay, apparently I can't find my flight, but um, okay. <laughs> I'll let you know if for some reason it doesn't work for me, but otherwise we'll keep that one. Okay, I will let you all go. I hope you have a nice evening. You too, enjoy DC, huh? Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye.